plaintiff, Don Hamilton, met the defendant four years ago. And although they had sex a few times, he insists they were never in a committed relationship. Don claims over time the defendant became clingy and possessive, and he's suing her today for vandalizing his car. Defendant Nicole Garcia says while she was with Don, he was constantly putting her down because he thought he was smarter than her. Nicole claims on the night of the vandalism, she was extremely intoxicated and doesn't remember anything. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presided. You may now be seated. Start with you. Well, um, about four years ago, I met Ms. Garcia at a bar that I frequent. Um, we had slept together a couple times and she had progressively kind of lost her mind. <laughs> yeah, how so? Um, he was that good. The, the <laughs> blew her mind. That's yeah. right. You, I blew her mind. That's how you're supposed to say it, uh, John. You met, and I blew her mind. I, I mean, if you love what you do. I right sense. That's what I do. Um, See me. That's what happened. <laughs> All you ladies, can't help it. Cautionary tale. <laughs> um, you know what you say? Look at him, throw his head. Got a little player, throw his head to the side. Got his, got his king wear on. That's right. King wear, that's what, that's what I call guys. The diamonds, they were like kings. Kings of uh, Africa had diamonds in both ears. So, all right, king. There you go, King Don. You, your name's Don? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can't lose. <laughs> you see, don't you see these earrings? Whoa! That was even before. See, you blow up mine before you even touch. That's how cold you are. I blow your mind without touching. <laughs> Bad man. Go ahead, though. What happened? <laughs> Tell me how you blew a mind. Let's go back. To, that's where we stopped. Tell me how, what happened to a mind. I can't tell everything in the bedroom, you know? But it, it was getting progressively worse. The text messages were becoming too much. Uh, you know, we'd hang out after the bar would close. And uh, she would, you know, started thinking that I was her boyfriend. We never went anywhere together. We never really, I don't think we've ever gone anywhere outside of that bar. So how long did you all play around with each other as it sounds like you're trying to describe it? She's gonna tell me it was an engagement. But you <laughs> So go ahead. What was the discussion? And how long was that time frame? Six months, one year, what? About a year, you know, here and there. It was never anything serious. Did she ever try and talk serious? Did she ever say, you know, I really want this to be something or us to be exclusive? You didn't hear any of that talk? In one ear, out the other. Well, see, you know. go ahead, uh, man. Let me hear from you. Give me some background here. We did. We met about four years ago. We walked in the same bar. You know, we both frequented that bar. We um, never met each other before then. And um, like you said, we we were sleeping together off and on for a while. We went on three dates. We did go out somewhere other than that bar, um, but it didn't work out. And we just we don't do well together. We st stayed friends, though, and I'm fine with that. What do you think he means by you uh, You got progressively worse and, that, you know, you lost I, your mind? When I drink, when I drink, I, I'm a terrible text messenger. Like, I'm like a drunk dialer. Okay. Type, yeah. Uh, so right. when I drink, I, I definitely get excessive with, like, text messages or calls and stuff. And he's not the only one I've done that to. Like, I have friends that I do that to, too. So they know me. Well, they got your name at the bar. They got a picture. They should put a picture up at the bar. Be careful, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All men beware. <laughs> so we were... Um, I mean, he's definitely an intelligent man, but he likes to make you feel like, no, he's intelligent that, you know, it's like I at times felt like he was like putting me down, like making like I was below him. So um, then how how did he do that? Just like if I didn't say something properly, like he'd correct me or um, if he felt like what was coming out of my mouth was stupid. He was like, that's just dumb. You know, like he would just make sure I knew that I was not as smart right, as he but was. But did he degrade you in the process or was it because see, sometimes people claim putting me down when it really means lifting you up. Well, sometimes, I mean, I felt that way, yeah. Was it intended to degrade you? 
Because I get that sometimes. People, I want to lift up. Yeah. They say, you know, you ain't got to put me down about it. I ain't trying to put you down. I'm trying to lift you up. You don't have to give me a lecture. <laughs> I get that. Mm. All the time. People come to me for help, and I try to give some advice alongside that help, and they interpret it as putting them down or lecturing you. And when I'm trying to give you some information that's going to lift you up. So take it like that. You tell me, were you degrading her or trying to lift her up? No, I just, you know, when people say things that could be concerning. What was your purpose? Uh, so she doesn't say, you know, talk like that and then come off okay. seeming little. Okay, so for less, her. You know. All right, I got it. My granddaughter is smart as a whip. Never seen a five-year-old as smart as her. Wow. But she says, instead of three, free. Like free. And so I, I, all I do is repeat it after she says it. She says, free. I say, three, and that's it. And then just keep saying it. Every time she says it wrong, I say it right. I say it right. I So I got it. Yeah. I got the objective. It's the way you do it. And she sounds like you haven't been doing it right. That's all. John, you met, and I blew her mind. <laughs> <laughs> you love what you do. Like sense. That's what I do. <laughs> oh. See me, that's what happens. <laughs> All you ladies, can't help it. Cautionary tale. <laughs> Plaintiff Don Hamilton was in a sexual relationship with the defendant, but he claims after he kicked her out of his house, she vandalized his car. So he's suing. So why are you suing her about the car damages? What happened here? Oh, um, I was out of work for about eight months last year, um, and I guess she was having some troubles at home, so. She didn't want to sleep at her own place. I have my own house, you know, live alone. And she had offered me, uh, you know, she wanted to sleep over. And I'm like, no, you're not staying at my house because they're just going to give you the wrong impression again, which Lord knows I don't want to do. <laughs> and she was like, I was like, just go get a hotel. And she's, no, no, I don't want to sleep in a hotel. She's like, I'll pay you, you know, 50 bucks to stay at your place for the night. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? You can take the master bedroom. I'll stay on the couch. Nothing's happening there. When, when I make a little money, she doesn't have to go home. That arrangement worked out maybe two or three more times. So I was just, all right, yeah, you can stay over. I wanted to watch my TV show when I got home. I'm a creature of habit. And I asked her, just give me 20 minutes. Just let me listen. Five minutes in. Yak, 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 yak. <laughs> Hit pause. Look, it's a really deep dive. I let, it's John Oliver, you know he goes deep. Could you just please, just keep it quiet. It's only, only 20 minutes. You can do that. Five-year-olds could do that. <laughs> you, you're so mean. You know, throw a little play punch. I'm like, don't hit me. You know not to touch me, because you know, I can't do anything back but keep your hands off me too. Be quiet, hands to yourself, third grade, come on. Just keeps talking to the show. I'm getting progressively mad at Will you shut up, please. Please just be quiet for 20 minutes. Keeps hitting me. I'm getting flustered, but finally she, be, she stays quiet for the, whole, the show. After that, I'm playing games, just ignoring her, not worried about her. You wanted to be with somebody like that? What's the attraction? I haven't heard anything other than, let me get away from him. He's mean and he's not interested and I'm not interested. This isn't an attractive uh, guy as it relates to his personality and everything he just said. Uh, be quiet, don't you say nothing for 20 minutes. <laughs> then five minutes in, Paul, didn't I just tell you to be quiet? <laughs> Oh, baby, I just, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not going to, you touching me? <laughs> Didn't I ever tell you never to put your hand in? It was time to walk out right then. It was time to give him some choice words on the way out. You know, I'm not talking about thank you, Lord. We're getting there. <laughs> that wasn't the words I'm saying, the greeting on the way out. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Uh, this is after three, four years of trying subtly to get the point across. There's, there was a whole year I spent. I would just sit at the bar, read the news, maybe watch ESPN, and here she'd come. Mm -hmm. Saddle up right next to me. Mm -hmm. Hour, two hours straight. 
all I sit there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When she go to smoke a cigarette, people be like, how are you doing this? Oh, you got a reputation in the bar. <laughs> they would warn me, you know she's here. You can turn around still, she's in the bathroom. You can go leave if you want to have a good night. And I'm like, just, it's all right. She can talk, get it off her chest. It's the end of her day too. All so. right, and what did she do to damage the car? Well, I asked her to leave my house because she kept putting her hands on me and I warned her, I'm like, either go to sleep or leave the house, but you got to get away from me at this point. So she's, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing this. I'm not, I'm like, okay. So I grabbed my phone, just put it up to my ear, pretended, yes, Garfield Police Department. I have a trespasser that's refusing to leave my house. She starts gathering her things up then. <laughs> So she walks out. I'm like, okay, it's weird. I had to go that far, but whatever. I didn't actually call the police on her. Mm -hmm. About five minutes goes by and I get a text saying, I bet your car has more scratches on it now than it did before. How could so you let a woman in your house like this? I'm a, I'm, I could put up with a lot of crazy, but knows that you've called the police and then proceeds after knowing that the police are on the way or assuming she commits the crime against your property, knowing that the police are on their way. Might even catch her in the act. Yes, yes. Here you go, King Don. Your <laughs> name's Don? Oh, yeah. Are <laughs> oh, you can't lose. <laughs> you see, don't you see these earrings? Whoa! That was easy before. See, you blow up man before you even touch. <laughs> That's how cold you are. I blow your mind without touch. <laughs> Plaintiff Don Hamilton was in a sexual relationship with the defendant, but he claims after he kicked her out of his house, she vandalized his car. So he's suing. All right, so where'd it go from there? Um, well, I, then I actually did call the police because obviously my property is damaged at this point. Being a mechanic myself, I know that was extensive damage all the way yeah, around pictures, the vehicle. What page might your pictures be? If you look through pages 12 through 20, Ma'am, what do you have to say about this? I, I was inebriated for sure. I was definitely out of my mind drunk. And I didn't remember a lot of it that uh, transpired. I kind of remembered arguing, him faking the cops. Then I remember the cops coming to my house, but they didn't do anything. Um, the next morning, I woke up and I realized, like, I messed up. So okay. I text him and I let him know, like, I'm sorry, I'll pay for any damages. No, you said you texted him and rubbed it in his face, but that was- But I don't remember that, that part oh, because remember I was I right. was drunk. <laughs> All right. I mean, we, came, we left, came to his house from the bar, so. And so what do you think about paying for these items? I mean, I would be more than happy to pay for what I, the damage I have done. Relax. And then I- What damage you do? You scratched up the car, Yeah, right? and then okay. I noticed um, he had only gotten one estimate done at the dealership. Um, I asked for another one. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want some side place or whatever. Correct. Um, but I mean, I wanted more than one because it's called for parts and stuff. I, I didn't see why, you know, at I this have- this amount in particular, you right. should have Right, and then I never one. even saw, we went back and forth, you know, I want to know what I owed him. Um, I said, you can claim it on your insurance. It shouldn't up your rates because it's it's um, vandalism. I've had I've done it before. I've had my car, I've had, I've had my car vandalized. I've had my car this vandalized. This was your first time. <laughs> I've had my car vandalized and broken All into. Right, go ahead. So um, when I said something to him about putting it through his insurance. This. <laughs> this many times. Don't worry. Go ahead. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, so he sent me a claim number that he had claimed it through his insurance. And so I called my insurance to see like, if there was anything to go back and forth between insurances, they said, well, he already made a claim. So we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna do anything about it either. Um, then a few months we went back and forth and I still, I wasn't getting like, what was the deductible? I don't know what that was. Um, I never saw proof that it was ever fixed anything. Um, I just know one day the car was gone. He, I didn't see it anymore. And now he's got a whole brand new car that I'm aware of. Okay, the only thing I've heard you say that is really applicable is the second estimate. I think that you were entitled to that. You don't have to take the one estimate that a person gives you that is claiming you've damaged their property. Uh, on the other hand, ma'am, everything else you just said has nothing to do with you. 
It has to do with him getting his car repaired, him talking with his insurance company. That has zero to do with, did you cause the damage? And are you liable for the damage? You caused it and you're liable because it was intentional. And so from there, the only issue you have is, how much do you want me to pay you for this damage? Everything else is between him, his insurance company, and your insurance company if they want to get involved, and the uh, repair of his car. Now, most people don't understand that insurance coverage has no relevance to a person's damage. They don't have to file it on their insurance. They don't have to pay a deductible. They can pay cash. So you can't get involved in how it's repaired. All you know is you're liable for 4,300. You're saying, well, his insurance took care of it. Yes, now it's between him and his insurance company. If he's ripping his insurance company off by taking money from them and taking money from you, then he's engaged in fraud. That's between him and the insurance company. The insurance company will come after you at some point. Mm -hmm. So we're giving you opportunity today to pay less than what the insurance company is gonna come after you for, because they are coming. If they find out, they can locate you and they can get their money mm -hmm. uh, because uh, they pay your debt. That's how they would uh, look at that. The insurance company paid your debt for the damage you committed. So we want our money for the debt we paid on your behalf. The insurance paid him, fine. But you still owe him. You get double paid, insurance, they come to you, hey, Come and uh, we paid for a claim the, for damages you caused and such and such. I paid him. Oh, you did? Yeah, I paid him. Let's see. Oh. And they go back to him. We understand you already got paid by uh, Nicole for this claim you filed for with us. Boom, he's in trouble. And I get that sometimes. People, I want to lift up. Yeah. They say, you know, you ain't got to put me down about it. I ain't trying to put you down. I'm trying to lift you up. You don't have to give me a lecture. <laughs> I get that mm. all the time. People come to me for help and I try to give some advice alongside that help and they interpret it as putting them down. Plaintiff Don Hamilton was in a sexual relationship with the defendant, but he claims after he kicked her out of his house, she vandalized his car, so he's suing. So I'm glad I'm able to explain that to viewers um, because most don't know and I understand it, it does sound a little uh, slightly unfair if one person is paying and now you want it from me as well. However, that's uh, just not the law. Judgment for the plaintiff. Have a good day. Just leave me alone. I don't want to hear that voice anymore. I will stay as far away from you as I possibly can. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Hope that we can continue to just keep going our regular places and staying apart like we've been doing.